And now joining me again is Dr. Cleophas LaRue. Dr. LaRue, your message on how to manage waiting must certainly be connected to your understanding of the black experience in America. I think you're right. I, I think of people who have known oppression had to come to some understanding about how to go on with life in spite of all that befalls them and yet keep a vibrant hope in life. And this notion of waiting on a powerful, sovereign God who will come, who has come, gives black people hope. And yes, that is born of my own experience also. You grew up in the church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Yes. You're a child of the church. Yes. And you told me earlier before the program that you admired the black preachers because of the dignity that you saw. Absolutely. Dignity and respect. They were community leaders. They were held in high esteem by the black and white and Hispanic communities. And they carried themselves in such a way that the younger blacks looked up to them and admired them. So from my youth up, I have always admired black preachers, and I continue to do so. And so this response in the scriptural reference from Habakkuk uh, of anticipation, not rebellion, not uh, uh, resignation. Re resignation or sarcasm, but yeah. anticipation. Yeah. And, and that's got to be based in hope. Absolutely. Absolutely. This, this, and it is, it is hope born of experience. Uh, because when you, when you preach about hope and, and a brighter tomorrow, it, it, is, it is not something that blacks are not acquainted with. Uh, we, we have known this. We have seen this. So in a sense, I'm simply reaffirming for them what they already know and believe. And if, we, if I were actually in front of a black audience, they would be saying, yes, amen, we know about what you are saying. We have lived it and experienced this anticipation. Martin Luther King said, how long? Yeah. How long? Yeah. The power of those words. Absolutely. The uh, struggle. Ab 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 absolutely. And from time to time, uh, a burden is lifted and, and some positive things come through and it gives, uh, uh, it gives those who have been oppressed uh, some sense that other things will also uh, get better. And you mentioned Martin Luther King. If you looked at the time in which he lived, we have come a long way. And it has been on the basis of this hope and anticipation and struggle. And it has been borne out in our lives. So this anticipation continues to be. You cite the self-sufficient culture in which we live. Yeah. Uh, that's a problem, isn't it, in yes. understanding how to manage the waiting that you talk about. Yes. And, and you quoted the poem Invictus. Yes. Interesting that Timothy McVeigh yeah. uh, chose those words yeah. at his death, master yeah. of my fate, captain of my soul. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Troubling. Yes, uh, uh, until, until the last, uh, he had the sense that he was in charge and that he was in control. And that was most unfortunate, I mean, because he said it as he prepared for death, which is clearly the case that he was not in control. But the, there is a sense in which the whole American mindset is kind of built around this notion that we can always take charge of our lives. And uh, the events of September the 11th and all, they've shown us that we are not always in charge and that there are times when we have no choice but to wait on this higher power. And so, so God is ultimately in charge, and it's God's work that we need to be about. Ab absolutely. And, and it is God at work in our lives to effect God's purpose that brings us to our purposeful end. It is not simply that we are at work and we bring our lives. It is God at work in us who brings us to our purposeful end. And that's why we have to wait on God so that life makes sense and meaningful. So there, does the distinction there between the self, self-interest, uh, focus on ourselves or our families, and the kind of hope that you're talking about where, where it's up to God. That's right. It, it's a hope born of, why have I been put upon this earth what is my reason for being here? And how best do I carry out the plan for which I have been placed here? And it is in a reliance on God. We have a work, but it is God's guiding hand that directs us in how to make that work most meaningful. You are a distinguished expert at Princeton on the history uh, and, um, uh, of, of black preaching uh, and styles and patterns of black preaching. 
Tell us about your new book, The Heart of Black Preaching. The Heart of Black Preaching is, is an effort to go back into 300 years of uh, uh, black preaching history to see if we could discover some thread that ran throughout the whole of our preaching in this country. And what I was able to discover is that there is in black preaching a common thread that centers around a sovereign God throughout history. In every period of our lives upon these shores, we have always believed that a sovereign, all-powerful God was at work on our behalf. And had we not believed that, I don't know if we could have come through the dark night of slavery or the oppression of segregation and many other things that we have been able to come through. Well, thank you so much for that authentic uh, message of inspiration, Dr. Cleophas LaRue.